these verses that you're looking at in James 1, 13 through 16 are part of a book that James wrote. It was a letter written 19 and a half centuries ago warning us about the lethal nature of lust. James gives us the final key to how we can overcome temptation. And what he says is that when we're tempted, it's inevitable, we need to learn to initially use the Word of God as a sword. As we're struggling through the temptation using the Word of God, we're to look around because God is faithful. He'll be there and He'll give us a way of escape. But when that temptation starts tugging at the deepest chords of our heart and starts enticing our lust, we are to flee and run from that. As a New Testament scholar, Leon Morris, wrote many years ago, the man or woman who carries on an act of impurity and lust is not simply breaking a human code. They're not merely sinning against the God who at some time in the past gave them the gift of his Holy Spirit. Rather, they are sinning against the God who is present at that very moment. They are sinning against the one who continually has given them his spirit. The impure act is an act of despot against God's good gift at that very moment it is being offered. This sin is seen in its true light only when it's seen as a preference for impurity rather than the spirit of God who is holy. Lust is so horrible because lust can only occur when we, in the face of God, turn from Him and embrace, rather, our own wicked way. Temptation will come to us in three different packages. It has different shapes and sizes and colors. But God says it will always fall into one of three categories. We will have material temptations, and this is the lust for things. Those things might be as big as the house of our dreams that we've always wanted or as small as a precious jewel or a ring. That lust may be as dazzling and bright as a new sports car or as dull and dusty as a 200-year-old antique dresser. But we can have a lust for things, material things. Secondly, temptations can come in a personal way. Personal temptations are a lust for status. We want special recognition. It's the status of fame. It's the status of fortune. It's the status of power or having authority. It's having a title that makes people's heads turn like the top executive or president or executive director or even doctor. And we long for the status that that brings in our world. But then there's the sensual temptations. This is the lust for another person. It's the desire to have and to enjoy the body of an individual, even though such pleasure is illegal and immoral to the God of heaven.